Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, moms. And uh, is it not working? <clears throat> Happy Mother's Day, moms. Uh, nice to have you here today, everyone. Uh, we are a boy band today. How do we look? Um, all of our ladies are missing, so um, probably out celebrating Mother's Day. Would you stand with us and sing as we prepare for worship? This is a new song to us, um, to our church, but it's, it really grows on me. I hope it grows on you too. It's a wonderful worship song. It's God who gives us everything. It's He who puts the breath in our lungs so we can pour out our praise.
Please remain standing for the call to worship. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us.
remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. Jesus Christ, our Savior and our God, you are our refuge and our strength. In good times and in hard times, we gather to bless your holy. You have promised to never leave us nor forsake us. You offer us a hope that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Strengthen our hearts, encourage our faith, and meet with us as we worship this day. Amen. seated today to look at your neighbor's name tag and greet them. today. Happy Mother's Day um, to all of you women, um, some who have your own biological children, some who have mothered uh, children in so many different other ways. Nice to see, a, uh, I see a few extra siblings and, and uh, mates here for Mother's Day. That's wonderful. So um, happy Mother's Day, um, ladies and um, kids. If you haven't done something for your mom, you still got till bedtime tonight. So uh, you know what the best thing, actually, I'm not going to say that because I'm going to have you up in a minute before Sunday school and give you some pointers. Welcome everyone this morning. Welcome if you're visiting. Um, you are a guest. It's always nice to have visitors with us. If you happen to be looking for a place to call your church home, uh, we would love to explore that possibility uh, with you here. If you're just stopping by, uh, do so anytime. And welcome to you who are here all the time. We appreciate you. Uh, you are the bedrock of our Christian community. Please note the things going on in your bulletin um, coming up. Annual congregational meeting on June 3rd, so that's what's, okay, wait a minute, I'm ahead of myself. Next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday. Uh, we have 19 teens to be confirmed, uh, we're excited. Um, we've given them some new options this year to make it more sincere. Uh, they can actually finish the program and say they're a non-believer. They can actually finish the program and say, I'm not ready to make a commitment, I'm still a seeker. Or they can say, yes, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I want to wear the name Christian and uh, be, be confirmed. Um, and those who do so can also choose whether or not they want to join the church. I'll explain that next week. But we have 19 young people who finished the program, and we're excited to celebrate with them and honor that next week. Um, this coming week on Wednesday, you'll note in there, uh, one of our confirmands is getting baptized. Uh, Jackson King, uh, you are encouraged and welcome to come out. It will be very short, so don't be late like you usually are, or you'll miss it. Uh, five o'clock, it's going to be about 15 minutes, and we'll be done. So come on out at Eagle Lake. Does anybody live? Has Eagle Lake hasn't been drained, has it? Okay, good. The kids keep telling me it's been drained. I said, well, that would be a drag, uh, but we could work that. Um, okay. Mustard seed coming up. We have an annual meeting coming up June 3rd. Um, important things on the docket are to vote into or not our new restructuring. Um, so uh, we've had some meetings and uh, hopefully you folks are ready to make an informed vote on that. 
Also, some other things uh, coming for the congregation. The warrant will be posted um, in the next two weeks. Flocking is here. Where did I see the flock? I saw the flock out on Highland Street. Oh, was it at your house? No, I was just on Highland, but I don't know where. Yeah, on Highland Street I saw it. And I got an email from Mission E4. Scott Long, didn't you do a good job last week, those who were here? Amen. Um, and Scott texted me this week. He said, so it appears the congregational flock has arrived at Mission E4 in Hubbardston. He said, what do I do with it? I said, didn't you get a note? I said, no. I said, just leave it. It'll fly away. So I told him he could make a $1,000 donation and we come get him. I think they're still there. Sunday school teachers needed. Um, confirmation Sunday, baptism. I think I mentioned everything. And please note, towards the end of July, yes, again, we are going to be worshiping in the woods out of Trout Brook. Um, you're welcomed and encouraged to come. Not sure yet whether our Baptist neighbors are joining us this year or not, but they are certainly more than welcome to. We'll get that clarified. Um, our former organist, Barbara Otto, is moving. Um, her house was sold, and she's got to move um, tomorrow. <laughs> so it's kind of last minute. Uh, but we're looking for people who might have some time tomorrow. She's got a U-Haul truck, um, and she could use some people to help her load that truck. So if you are available, um, just for lack, uh, see either Chris King. Yeah, I can give you her phone number. Chris can give you your phone number, or Carol Davis, who is in charge of the Care Network. Anything else for announcements this morning? Kelly? Um, it's not really a church announcement, but I just want to let people know if you have not had the opportunity to see the movie, I can only West Boylston Cinemas this week. So great price and great exceptional movie. Yes, I can only imagine. I did see it. It was a great movie. And James Keevan works there. She can say hi to James, too. Which reminds me of another thing. I'm thinking, why are you guys dressed in your scout uniforms? Because the scouts got a little rained out yesterday. And uh, guys, listen up. If you haven't bought flowers yet for your mother or the mother of your children, the scouts are still selling them out front after church. Anything else this morning? Kids, why don't you come forward to talk to me for a minute on your way out to Sunday school. So bring your offering and everything you're going to bring with you. Hug your mom on the way out. Oops. No, don't go to Sunday school. Guys, over here. Over here. Good job, Caleb. Hi, guys. Are you silly today? You're silly. Sam's silly? Yeah. So how is everybody today? Good? What is today? Mother's Day! What did you do for your mom this morning? Um, our mom was at work, so we couldn't meet her today. But we will meet her this afternoon. And what are you going to... And I made a heart for Mother's Day. You made a heart and you made flowers? Yes. Oh, you grew a flower. How cool is that? What did you guys do for your mom? Hold on, guys. I can't hear them. I did a hand on a card, and it says, I love you. That is wonderful. And I got it. 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 And Oh, yeah? So you guys made some artwork. Um, let me ask you this. What's special about moms? What makes mom special? Raise your hand. Michael, what makes mom special? Your mom's good to you? William? They care for you? What else do moms do that are good? They share stuff? Do moms give good hugs? Yeah. Do moms... Uh, Make good food. Yes. No. <laughs> what was that? Is this, is this a me too moment or something? <laughs> um, do moms clean up all your toys? No. Or do they make you clean them up? I clean up. You clean up? That's a nice thing to do for your mom, right? Do moms read books to you? Yeah. Do moms ever read the Bible to you? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, let's see, what else do moms do? What else can you think of? Now, how, how, old, when, how old do you have to be before you stop celebrating Mother's Day? 
mean, I'm 50. My mom's 75. 100. You think I should do something for my mom? Should I do something for my mom on Mother's Day? No, never stop. Mother's Day. Right on, Caleb. You never stop celebrating Mother's Day, right? Because your mom's always your mom. Um, I'm going up to take my mom out for uh, Mother's Day tomorrow, so because uh, I can't go up today. But yeah, it's good to celebrate our mom. See up on the on the cross here. See the heart. Who can read? What does that say? I love you, mom. It says, "I love you, mom," on the cross. Now, why would it say, "I love you, mom," on the cross? What do you guys think? Hey, no wrestling over here. You guys are having too much fun. What do you think? Because God made them. God made your moms. You love your moms. And guess who loved his mom? Do you know Jesus loved his mom? Do you know when he was on the cross, he was in a lot of pain. It was like falling hard off your bike kind of thing. And on the cross, he said, he said to one of his best friends, he said, hey, take care of my mother. Right? He said, take care of my mom. So even, who was Mary, and even at the end of his life, Jesus still loved his mom. So let's be thankful for our moms. If you haven't done something already, do something nice. And the best thing you can do probably is just give them a hug and tell them how much you appreciate them. Because sometimes they need to hear that. And of course, you guys can behave, right? That helps the moms. Let's pray. Fold our hands. That, you know why we fold our hands? Like this. Yeah. And it keeps us from being distracted, like pushing our brother. And then let's close our eyes and our mouths, except to repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for our moms, for creating them, to love us and care for us and help us grow. Bless our moms, and may we be a blessing to them too. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, off to Sunday school. Oh, couple. So what, were you guys offended that I said moms cook for you? It's not bad. What's that? <laughs> what can we pray for this morning? Kelly's still recovering from her surgery. Um, but also I wanted to, I, I know we've been praying, we've been praying for our, our niece Leah. Uh, Jim and I were able to go see her yesterday. She is not faring well. She is, now has pneumonia. Of course so. How old is Leah? Is she 20? She just turned 24 last week. 24. I remember when they were really little. So let's continue to pray for Leah. That's Lynn's daughter, right? Bill's daughter. Um, 24, and uh, she has had heart surgery and all kinds of complications. And continue to pray for Kelly as her arm heals. Um, Jill. She's having stomach issues. Your sister. Did I see your hand, Catherine? Yeah. I'm just praying that Dorothy is here and Harry. Absolutely. So let me, let me, I was going to highlight that. So uh, it is nice. We've been praying for Dorothea, um, who has been having cancer treatment and all kinds of uh, side effects of that. It's wonderful to have you back. You look great. And, um, you too, Dick. It's good to have you back. <laughs> and Terry, uh, who was in a car accident and has been in the hospital recovering, it's wonderful to have you back, too. Nice to be back. Thank I'd you. I'd like to thank the church for cards, prayers, visits, phone calls. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. It's good when we... I do, Pastor, about cards and the words that were written to me were such a pleasure Pleasure and uh, to have that so many people in this church are, have reached out and uh, it's a wonderful church and I'm grateful for every single one of you in this church. And it's a blessing that I'm here. Right? 
Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And what a good testimony to say God is working in our midst. When we care for one another, the world will know that we're his disciples. What else we got this morning? <laughs> Everybody stop gesturing because I can't tell. Chuck. Yes, Chuck. Diane's uh, sister passed away unexpectedly. What's her name, her sister's name? Linda. Yeah. yeah, pray for the whole Noise family and Diane's mom who's still with us. Yeah. And you too, Chuck. John. Alice Holland, who's in the hospital. Oh. Alice Holland in the hospital. Also, I got a call this morning um, from Kelly Maxwell that Jim Young had another stroke, unfortunately. Um, so let's keep Jim in our prayers. He is in the hospital. Nancy is with him. What else? Kermit. My daughter's uh, husband, Chuck, who's 93 years old, has been diagnosed with cancer. So we need prayers for him. Chuck, who's 93, diagnosed with cancer. Jennifer. Uh, my friend Stephanie that we've been praying for who is going through the radiation treatment for the sinus cancer. Um, pray for some ease for the sores that are in her mouth. She's extremely thin and not able to really take in much food because of the radiation that's killing the what's left of the cancer but creating these burns through her mouth that <coughs> she's mom and trying to take care of her two young yeah, children. That's tough. It's a good reminder, too, that some of our moms are really suffering today and, uh, and struggling uh, physically, not able to take care of their kids, um, all kinds of things. Let's keep that in our prayers as well, along with Stephanie, um, whose radiation is causing mouth sores. What else we got? All right, let's bring these and ourselves before God in prayer. Dear God, what a privilege it is to come into your presence, to be called your children, to be redeemed from the world, not because we have been found so worthy, but because of your great love for us. Lord, your love for us is incredible, beyond our full comprehension. Thank you for redeeming us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for embracing us. Thank you for calling us your children. And as little children come to their parents, we come to you, our Heavenly Father. Hear our prayer, God. We know you do. And help us to hear you because we know you'll respond. And it may be and probably will be with greater wisdom and with a better plan than what we have. We trust you, Lord, to hear our prayers. Hear our prayers and the prayers of your people that we bring before you this morning. We pray for Kelly as she recovers from her surgery. We pray for Leah and the battle that she's having after heart surgery and in the ICU. Lord, um, help her to recover and get back in her feet and enjoy longevity of life. We pray for Chris and the stomach um, cancer, the stomach uh, issues that she is having, be with her and help her, Lord. We rejoice that you've answered prayers and that Dorothy and Terry are doing so well and are back with us today. We pray uh, for Linda, Lord, and all who mourn her passing, for Diane and Chuck and Keith and the Noyes family. Lord, give them comfort in the midst of grief. We pray for Alice and Jim as they are in the hospital. Watch over them, Lord. May they get the care they need. We pray for Chuck and the cancer that uh, he has been diagnosed with and, and be with him and along with Stephanie um, who is undergoing radio, radiation treatment and it's causing side effects of sores in her mouth. Lord, we lift these people before you and we pray, Lord, for your healing, for you are a God who heals. And while we don't want to be foolish, 
but we also don't want to be without faith. We trust in you, Lord, and we pray that you would heal. And we will accept any miracle that you will pour out on us. We thank you for the gift of medicine and all that it can do, Lord. And yet when we're in crisis, it still seems so limited and unable to fully meet the need that we have. But you, God, are able. And so, Lord, we lift the sick before you this morning and pray that your will would be done. And pray more than anything that those who are sick would know your presence with them in the midst of their struggle. If they believe in you, Lord, may they know it through the very presence of your indwelling Holy Spirit. May they know it through the visits that they receive from those who carry your Holy Spirit with them who believe in you. Give us compassion. Give us perseverance as we minister to those in all kinds of sickness and in trials and in difficult times. Well, Lord, hear these prayers this morning. And we add additional prayers that we didn't speak out loud in situations that are on our hearts and minds. We add them to this prayer in this moment of silence. of your people. Lord, be with those who are discouraged and depressed and lift them up. Be with those who are facing difficult decisions and give them wisdom, Lord. We pray for those who have lost their way. We pray, Lord, that as the good shepherd, you would go after them and find them and bring them back to yourself and to the flock. We pray for those who need provision, Lord, money, stuff to pay bills and provide needs to get out as we've got ourselves in by your grace. Provide, we pray. We pray, Lord, for your church and pray that you would continue to strengthen your ministry here. Lord, thank you for, the, for our fellow brothers and sisters who gather across this town and state and nation and world this morning who profess you as Lord and Savior. We have our differences, Lord, but we are one in you. We praise for that. And Lord, on this Mother's Day, we pray for our mothers. Thank you for our mothers, Lord. Thank you for the goodness they've showered on us. Forgive them for the times they failed, Lord. And for those who have failed very badly, we ask your special grace on them, Lord, and healing on those who have perhaps felt very hurt and very abandoned. Lord, thank you for motherhood and bless our mothers, Lord. Give them compassion, give them patience, give them wisdom, give them love for the children that you have blessed them with and called them to care for. And of the Lord, for those who are mothers to children and others in all sorts of ways, and mothers to those who are not their own biological children, give them the same blessing, Lord, and may they not even see the difference. Bless grandmothers, Lord, and great-grandmothers, and thank you for our mothers. And may we care for them even in our old age and even in our dying breath, as Jesus did from the cross for his mother. Oh Lord, hear our prayers this day. Be with our state, be with our nation, our president and Congress, our relationships with other nations, be it on trade or treaties or nuclear weapons or war. Lord, be with our leaders, we pray, and be with our world. We long for the day when you will return. We long for the day when peace will reign, when your kingdom will reign. And Lord, help us to be patient, to hold on to the faith, to persevere in love. We pray all these things in Christ's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. And uh, thank you, Kyle, for rocking us out in the band to a beautiful violin. And God bless you for using your gift for his glory. Larry, am I reading first or are you? You're reading? Uh, he's doing one and three. We are continuing this morning our series on the Sermon on the Mount. We're almost done. Two weeks left. Um, we are in Matthew 7. Take it from here, Larry. <laughs> Our first reading is from Matthew 7, uh, verses 13 through 23. It can be found on page 1510 if you'd like to follow along. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will, be rec you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a ba bad tree bears bad fruit. <clears throat> a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and, your, and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from 2 Peter, the end of the first chapter, the beginning of the second chapter. First Peter 1, verse 19. Nope. <laughs> How about Second Peter? See, that was a test. Watch out for false teachers who would read First Peter instead of Second Peter. Chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. That is what it says. Sorry. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, through though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But there will also be false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Here ends our second reading. Our third reading is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7 through 11, and can be found on page 1666 in your pew Bibles. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. 
I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have, I have come that they may have life and have it to the, to the full. Here ends our third reading. not the end of my sermon, so sorry. <laughs> Wolf in sheep's clothing. I edited that down, by the way. Um, Reminds you of Saturday morning cartoons? <laughs> Wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what we're talking about today. And that may be the funniest part of the message, unless I really mess up. Because I'm tired today for some reason. I woke up not feeling well. There have always been wolves disguised in sheep's clothing in the body of Christ. Of course, they're not really in the body of Christ. They're imposters who have come in not through the narrow gate, but they've jumped over the fence or come in some other way. They don't belong here, but their goal is destruction and deception. And Jesus is telling us to be where? Because they're there. And they're dangerous and they're destructive. Not only to an organization or a community, but their heresies and false teachings are destructive to your very soul. When I think of false teachers, I think of some of these people that come to mind. This is Robert Tilton. Does anybody remember Robert Tilton? 
I don't think he's still on the air, but he to me is the quintessential televangelist preacher. I had to counsel a guy when I was younger saying, he said, you know what, I, he had some issues and he said, I'm health issues, I'm sending Robert Tilton $50 a month, the guy was on like welfare, because by planting my seed, I'm going to get healed. And I'd say, you know what? God will bless your giving. Just, just find a good local church somewhere and give it there or someone you trust in. Not this guy. Anybody know who this is? Jim Jones, right? Remember Jim Jones out in California? Preacher, charismatic, went to his head, started a whole cult, went down to Jonestown. And when, when you hear the phrase, don't drink the Kool-Aid, it comes from there, right? Because they all drank Kool-Aid, poisoned, he killed them all. Hitler. I was talking to Dan Wilford from Emmanuel Lutheran a few months ago, maybe earlier this year, and we were talking about how the Lutheran church, which is the German church, felt duped by Hitler. He just kind of snuck in and he twisted Christianity for them. And the church now is embarrassed that they remain silent while Hitler did his whole thing. That's why when we were talking about all the issues with refugees and immigrants, the Lutheran church said, no, we have to do something because we, it's almost like, not that they believe in penance, but almost like we need to try to make right our wrong. Because even a politician like Hitler... And then you have guys like this guy, Robin Meyer. Now, Robert Tilton, motivated by greed, television evangelists. Are they all corrupt? Are they? No, they're not all corrupt. Jim Jones, motivated by power and control and lust. By the way, if your leader's sleeping with everybody, there's something wrong. <laughs> Hitler motivated by power and greed and manipulation of the culture to do his will. And then this guy, who I've mentioned before but not shown his picture, Robin Meyer, liberal theology. And most of you know me, know I'm fairly open-minded, but you can go so far that you've missed the boat. This gentleman was a keynote speaker at one of our congregational annual meetings. And as I've said many times before, he, had, he wrote this book, Saving Jesus from the Church. It says, how to stop worshiping Christ and start following Jesus. So basically he said, would you stop calling Jesus God? Would you stop pretending of the virgin birth? Stop pretending that his death on the cross was anything more than an unfortunate accident. This kind of stuff gets in the church and it's heretical and it's wrong. False, and I could go on. But false teachers, wrong motivations. But wait, you say. <laughs> didn't you just say two weeks ago, John, and didn't Jesus just say, do not judge? Wasn't that a little judgmental? Do you think you were a little judgmental of Robert Tilton and, and maybe Robin Myers? I don't think anyone cares that I'm judgmental of Jim Jones or Hitler, but I was kind of judgmental of them too, weren't I? Didn't Jesus just say, do not judge or you too will be judged? For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Do you know who likes this verse the most? The wolf. Oh yeah, don't be judging me. I may not be an attractive sheep. And, and, and maybe I have changed my identity here from wolf to sheep. But I'm among you and, and, and uh, don't judge me. That would be foolish for the sheep, wouldn't it? And foolish for us too. Really what Jesus means here by not judging others is judge yourself first. Yes, it was good for us a couple weeks ago to talk about not being so judgmental. Getting off our high horse, remembering how much grace God has given us so that we don't get arrogant and cocky and be pointing the fingers at everybody else, but that we stay humble. And we judge ourselves first, and then we can help others. So, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. 
By their fruit, you will recognize them. Watch out for false prophets. As I already said, the Bible is full of this. In the Old Testament, there were false prophets. And God would send the true prophets to condemn them and say, you're just dreamers. You're just making stuff up. You're not even coming to me to say, God, what do you want to say to the people? You're just making stuff up. And you're telling the people whatever they want to hear. You're saying, peace, peace, God says at one point in the Old Testament. There's no peace. I'm telling you to the prophet Jeremiah, I'm bringing destruction. You don't want to listen to him. You just want the guy that says, peace, prosperity, when destruction is coming. In the New Testament, Paul says, they, in, the, in the last days we'll surround ourselves with teachers and prophets who will tell us what our itching ears want to hear. Who won't challenge us, who won't rebuke us, who won't bring us back to what's true. But just tell us what we want to hear. False teachers abound. Jesus said at the end of Matthew that in the last days, false teachers would come and they would deceive many and lead them astray, even convincing them that they were Jesus and they were the Messiah and going the right way. Jesus says, don't believe them, don't follow them. When I come back again, everyone's going to know it. On the clouds with lightning and fire and trumpets, you'll know. And he said, these prophets that will be so convincing, they'll be able to deceive even the elect, those who are chosen of God, if that were possible. False teachers abound. They come to us in sheep's clothing. In other words, they seem normal. They seem good. But inside, remember the Sermon on the Mount? It's all about the inside. I didn't put up the slide again this week, but remember our setting? We've got Jesus talking to the disciples, hundreds of them, with thousands of crowds around, and the hecklers in the corner, the Pharisees, they're hypocrites. They're the wolves in sheep's clothing. And they're all around, and outwardly they look good. They wear the religious garb. They do the religious thing, but inside, like Jesus said, you're corrupt, you're dead, you're rotting. Your whitewashed tombs, your hypocrites, he tells the leaders. And how will we recognize them? By their fruit. That's the key verse. If you see bad fruit coming from what otherwise tells you it's a good tree, beware. And if you see good fruit coming from someone perhaps who isn't even that great of a teacher and fumbles and bumbles over their words, that has more credibility. By their fruits, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? I tell you, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Not everyone, but only those who do the will of my Father. This is a troubling verse. I don't like this verse. Because I'm always afraid that's going to be me. Now that's just my own paranoia. That I say, Lord, I served you. I, I didn't, didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I run a church? Didn't I do all this stuff? And, and, and I'm so afraid sometimes that Jesus will say, I, I never knew you. What does he mean there? These people had some kind of power. They were able to cast out demons. They were able to prophesy, which today I, I believe is a spirit of preaching, among other things. They um, <clears throat> were able to do miracles in the name of Jesus. And yet somehow, they didn't actually know him. Remember Paul tells us, I'm going to show you the greatest thing. If you can speak in tongues of angels and of men, but you don't have love, you don't have anything. If you can move mountains, do miracles, but don't have love, you have nothing. If you give all yourself to the poor, do these great works, but don't have love, you don't have nothing. You see, what's love? Love is God and God's presence in us. That inward change is what counts. The only thing that counts, Paul says, is faith expressing itself through love. None of this outward stuff, not even miracles, not even healings, not even demon casting out, not even great preaching, but only love. And love is relational and the greatest love is to have a relationship with God. Say, God, I know you know me. And I'm trying to know you more. <clears throat> Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. So, 
Let me give you some tips this morning on how to safeguard, uh, some tips in my humble opinion, on how to safeguard ourselves from false teachers. First of all, be aware. Be on your guard. Not everything you pick up on a supposed Christian bookshelf or hear on Christian radio or hear on the news or hear your friends say is of God. Not everything you hear in church is of God. Be aware. False teachers are everywhere. They permeated the early church. They've always permeated the church. Be aware. Even the Bible tells us, be awake. Be alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Some little sheep who can be enticed away by the carrot and then made into a sandwich, right? Be on your guard. No scripture. Read it. Study it. Meditate it. My friends, this is so important. And I can't overemphasize this. We are an intelligent people. You have degrees and you read. Shame on us for not knowing God's word. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, how did he defend himself? By quoting scripture. And he was a son of God. The devil was trying to distort and twist and get in there. And Jesus clearly quoted scripture back to him. Know the scriptures. When you know the scriptures, you are much less subject to error. You can know the scriptures and be led astray. That's true. But some of us get led astray by simple things that we should never be led astray of because we don't know God's word. That's why God has given us his word. That's why the church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has preserved it. So that it would be our canon, our measuring stick to measure all truth by. And it's one of the foundational principles of our church here. And you know that, those who've been around. Second of all, know Jesus through the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are not the end. The scriptures are a means to an end. The scriptures tell us who God is. They tell us what it means to have a relationship with him, how to walk with him, how to be cleansed and washed of our sins. And we need to put it into practice. We need to have a relationship with Jesus. Notice I italicize and emphasize that word because it's not knowing about Jesus. Passing a Bible quiz on who Jesus was as a historical figure or his teachings is not knowing Jesus. Jesus Christ lives. He's risen from the dead. He's poured out his Holy Spirit. He lives in our midst. He is beckoning to each one of you. And no one is unworthy because he's made you worthy. He's beckoning to each one of you. Have a relationship with me. Know me. If we know God's word and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we will be much more likely to discern. Learn to discern. I love what Jesus said. That's why I included that passage from John. My, sh my sheep hear my voice and they respond. This, by the way, requires some maturity and growth as a Christian. Uh, this requires some um, experience and time. But I think you can learn through prayer through meditating on the scriptures and the Holy Spirit, to hear God's word and to discern. Now, I hold this a little lightly because, I don't know, I'm human and I'm easily led astray. But I've been in places before and I've heard people speak and I've said, and I have made a scene. Well, not usually. Um, that person, I know what they're saying is good, but my spirit is saying, no, I just, I don't like what they're saying. Now, it could be I'm in a bad place. Or it could be they're not speaking the truth. I don't know. But learn to discern. Learn to listen to God's word. Does anybody know what I mean by that? Amen. Pray for discernment. Boy, we just read that previously in this past. Maybe all this is leading up to it, right? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Are you hearing some stuff that doesn't seem right to you? Are you hearing some teaching that doesn't set right with you? Maybe it is challenging you to grow because maybe you have some wrong thinking that's being challenged. But also, maybe it's wrong. So ask God, God, I'm confused. I don't understand what I heard in church today. I, I don't understand what I just heard on the radio or read in this book or watched on TV. I, I'm confused. Help me to discern who's right here. 
And God promises to give when we ask, right? It was that last week's sermon, the week before, it was away last week. Ask. God loves to give good gifts to his children. He won't abandon you. Test the message. In the book of Acts, the Bereans were praised because they didn't just receive the gospel, but they got out their Old Testament scrolls and they went through to see if what Paul was saying was accurate. My friends, that is praiseworthy behavior today. You test everything I say by scripture. You test everything you hear. Test it. Right, Keith? Keith is my main tester there in the back corner. He's going to give me feedback today. Um, just like he gave me feedback on the last judgment sermon, and I'm incorporating a little bit of what he said today. <laughs> yeah, do that. Like I said, we own the sermon. It's not just me. It's the church's sermon. I'm the preacher. Test the messenger. Fruits or deeds, right? This is what Jesus said. Is there fruit in the message? Is it Jesus' message? Does it sound like the message you know from the Bible? Is there fruit in the person? Fruit of deeds, fruit of character. Is, is this a kind, merciful person? Is this a person who um, um, cares about the poor and is generous? Or are they just greedy and self-centered and ego-narcissistic maniac? Um, do they bear good character, right? What does Paul tell us in Galatians? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentle, gentleness, and self-control. Are you seeing that from this person? Are they faithful? Are they gentle? Are they a person of peace? Are they kind? Are they forgiving? Now here's the catch-22, right? I know you looked for the perfect pastor, didn't exist, so here I am, right? There's no such thing as a perfect teacher. There's no such thing as a person without flaws or struggles with sin, and I, I know that firsthand. Do you know that? You do. So we have to be careful when we test the messenger and even the message. I've said this before, right? There are so many churches that split over the smallest hair of detail, and I don't believe any one of us has it 100%, right? Because God's just so great. But we keep striving for truth and we keep working and we keep reading his word and we pray and we ask and we try to discern. Test the message. Test the messenger. And by the way, here's a great test. If you call that person, I'm like, let's say today the leaders sit down with me and say, John, we've discovered you, you are very pompous and very arrogant and it's very ungodly. Um, and we're calling you to repent. Now, I would say if that leader can receive that, I know I'm a little defensive sometimes, but can receive that eventually and humble themselves, that is a sign of godly character. Not perfection, but humility. But test what I'm saying. Maybe I'm just setting myself up to look good. Oops. You cut that. Take action, last one. Call out, move on, warn others. This is a tough thing. So in our culture that doesn't want to be judgmental, and we shouldn't be, we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry, just like we learned a few weeks ago when we talked about being judgmental. But we should be awake and we should be alert and we should be testing things. My friends, teaching is important. Teaching is important. The Bible says teachers and prophets will be held to a higher standard. Why? Because what they say and what they teach affects other people. That's why Jesus was so merciful to the sinners, the everyday people who were led astray, very merciful, and on the other hand, turned to the teachers and was really hard on them, like harder than anyone else, because he was like, you should know better, Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees. You sit in Moses' seat, and you should teach the truth, and in fact, the words you say are right, but the way you live, you have no mercy, you have no compassion, you've, you've made up all these rules because you're proud, and you're making God less accessible and not more accessible and he was mad at them very mad take action it is okay to call out in the in the culture of this church i'm not looking for trouble but in the culture of this church call out your minister i don't think that was right john i think you missed the mark on that but do it based on scripture and prayer i was a sense in the holy spirit in you we can talk about it we will work it out move on I know some people stay at churches far too long, and I am one who says, be faithful, wait things out, all that kind of stuff. But listen, sometimes you just need to move on. If you had a friend involved in Jim Jones' cult, right, or, or David Koresh, or, or my friend who was giving money to Robert Till, move on. 
get away from that person. They're a bad influence, they're a false teacher. Warn others. We have to be careful with this and humble. Again, going back to that other principle of quick to listen, try to understand this person, slow to get angry, slow to judge, because boy, that's that balance. We Go back and listen to that sermon again if you need to. We, we get trigger happy. And we live in this trigger happy social media world that's crazy and everybody's ready to knee jerk and just destroy somebody. But be slow, but when you figure it out, say, you know what? With all, out of love and with respect, Stay away from that person. And maybe have compassion on them. You know, God loves them, but I think they're wrong, and I think they're deceived, and I think they're doing more harm than good. Well, do you? How do you know? How do you know? Do I have you all hoodwinked? Deceived? You should test every teacher, including me, everybody. The integrity of the church depends on it. Does my character, please give me some grace, I give you grace, does my character match the fruit of a growing Christian? Does my, is my message in keeping with the word of God or do you not know the word of God and, and you just have to take my word for it? Well, don't be like that. I know everybody can't be a student, but more can be a student. I welcome what Keith does, usually. Um, and, I would welcome, <laughs> and I would welcome you as well. It is so easy, my friends, to be deceived. And, and those of you who get paranoid, I don't want you to be paranoid. But I want you to be awake and I want you to be alert. And I want you to follow these things we just talked about. Be on guard. Know scripture. Grow in your relationship with Christ. Learn to discern God's voice. Pray. Wow, God, John just threw a, a lob, a huge one in our laps today. Is he true? Is he a good teacher? Are we learning the right things for him? Or is he misguided? And listen, it may not be all or nothing. I could be very true and very good in one area and, and kind of undeveloped in another area. Let's sharpen each other. I, I welcome the call out. <laughs> Keith. Test the message. Test the messenger. Take action. Let's pray. Dear God, you know my heart. And yes, this prayer could be just another show. But Lord, I do pray that I would not be a false teacher. And Lord, I would rather have you strike me dead right now than to be a false teacher. Lord, I know that I'm not perfect. I know my life is not perfect, and you know that well. Lord, I know that I can't have everything right in my doctrine, but I try, Lord. And I pray, Lord, you would help us as a church to cling to your word, to not give in to the cunningness of false teaching and, and watered down ideas or misleading ideas that entice us, that itch our ears, that really don't have life in them. Lord, lead your people, and not just us, Lord, but the whole body of Christ. Deliver us from false teachers, from those who bring more harm than good, from those who would just try to destroy the body of Christ, Lord. May your will be done. You are the good shepherd. Bless your people, Lord, and thank you for the blessing of truth. I humbly submit myself to you, and we humbly submit ourselves to you as a church. May your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs>
Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all that you've given us, your word, your world, yourself. Lord, receive these, our humble offerings that we give back to you. And Lord, use them to strengthen the ministry of your church in this place, to help those in need and to spread the gospel across the street and to the ends of the earth until you come again in all your fullness and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First time is Acolyte, great job. The things we talk about sometimes can stir up things in you. Please note we um, discuss these passages every Wednesday at Wednesday morning, Bible study and evening if you'd like to discuss more. And if something ever is troubling you about anything that says, I'm here for you, I won't judge you, uh, but I will help you as best I can. And now may that Holy Spirit that dwells within us by the grace of Christ fill you that you may know him, and that you may do his will, and that he may know you. Go forth, led by the light of his word. Go forth, filled with the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.